recording. Okay. Hi, Tanya. Hi there, how are you? Great, you make quorum. Yeah, this is a real situation we've got. Um, yeah, let's call the meeting to order first. Um, I, I call the um, meeting of the Netherlands Board of Trustees together at 6.01. Uh, can we get uh, take roll, Macy? Um, will you just clarify it's 701 where we are? Okay, sorry about that. 701. Thanks. Yes, thank you, Tom. Um, do we have Trustee Blakemore? Um, is it okay? Thank you, Miranda. Uh, Trustee Blakemore. Here. Trustee Corvalon? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Mahold? Here. Trustee Baumhover? Here. And I would like to note for the record that Trustee Coombs Ismail is absent currently. Um, he may join later, is that correct, Miranda? He was gonna if he ended up having reception, he was gonna try it, but I wouldn't anticipate if he's not on now. Get Trustee Blake more. He may not be able to join. Thank you. Did you call for Trustee Blakemore? Sorry, I was not yet. Oh, that was the first name I called. Okay, good. So we have a quorum. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, we we do have a lot of things to discuss tonight, um, Trustee Corval, and I'd say, um, Miranda, you want to set the table first in, in terms of process. Uh, we're going to have a board discussion first, and then call for it'll be we'll be open for public comment uh, after after that. Yep. Make Okay, uh, read us in, uh, set the table right. for us, Miranda. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. So the reason for this meeting tonight is a trust, excuse me, Mayor Taylor has submitted his resignation that was emailed to you a few hours ago. So I just wanna kind of set this up a little bit to offer that clarification. So on April 5th, uh, Trustee Taylor was elected to serve as the mayor of the town of Netherland. And on April 19th, he took his oath of office as the mayor. It was at that time that a vacancy for a trustee position was created. Uh, Mayor Taylor submitted his resignation today, which thereby creates another vacancy for the mayoral position. According to state statute, the Board of Trustees can either fill a vacancy by appointment or special election, and they have 60 days from the date of vacancy to do so. So for when Trustee Taylor, when that vacancy was created, the board had until June 19th to decide how you want to handle it. And there were some preliminary discussions, but ultimately ended in wanting to wait to see what was going to happen with regards to possibly another trustee um, resigning, which is not occurring, and then also Mayor Taylor's resignation. So before you, you now have the two vacancies. You have the mayoral vacancy and you have the trustee vacancy. And we need to do, know, decide what to do with both. They can both be handled the same way, or they can be handled separately, where mayoral is handled one way and the trustee is handled another. You have two options. First is the appointment. The Board of Trustees could choose to fill a vacancy through an appointment. If that were to happen, we would call for application starting tomorrow. We would give people 21 days to turn in their application. Uh, so by Tuesday, June 14th, 21 days is the typical turnaround time. And then on Tuesday, June 21st, the Board of Trustees would look at the applications and decide who to appoint. We could also do a special election. If we were to do a special election and following state statute, we could, the earliest we could have that would be Tuesday, August 23rd, assuming we release nomination petitions tomorrow. If we were to do that, there is an election calendar in your packet um, that kind of outlines the process. 
And we would also be seeking tonight for you to approve two different resolutions, one designating Macy as the town clerk as the designated election official and approving a mail-in ballot election so we can get that process started. Ultimately, the question before you tonight is, does the Board of Trustees want to fill the vacancy through an election or appointment? And do you want to fill both the same way? Or would you like to fill one through an appointment and one through an election? And I'll just leave this up here, Mayor Pro Tem Mahold, just so people can see what the options are. Good. Whoops. Tanya, you spoke first, so I'll let you continue. Okay, well, I mean, there's there's a lot to talk about. Um, I'm just so disappointed we're here um, in this situation. I felt completely ignored many times when I brought this up in meetings, when I wrote letters, only Jonathan and Lindsay even responded um, about possible actions we could have taken prior to the election to have prevented where we're at. But nonetheless, here we are. Um, and it's a tough situation. I, first of all, there's a lot of issues that I have uh, several questions I have, but the 1st 1 is regarding our own code. Particularly the 2 dash 4 and as all of our code is, it's all fairly vague and open to interpretation. It doesn't. It's not specific to this particular situation. So, I mean, I'm curious what everybody else is thinking the. In the event. Those particular words would mean. Um, does it mean in the event that a trustee spot opens up uh, the day after the election, or is that meant? Is it open to interpretation that it's only before the election? I mean, because this was all a foregone conclusion. That that's what makes me so upset. Um, so none of this is a surprise to anybody. Um, it's not like oh, so what about? Code two dash four. What? How is that related to our election process? That's so my first question. Two dash four specifies how the length of a trustee term is handled. It doesn't dictate how a vacancy is filled. That only happens under state statute. So two dash four would apply if there were four trustee positions on the ballot because. So we are filling a, a prior appointment, um, then that person would receive a two-year term like Trustee Corbelin in 2018, or excuse me, 2020, when you won, you filled a two-year term, but there were five seats on the ballot up for election. So 2-4 doesn't apply in this situation, because again, there weren't four seats open on the ballot. And there weren't four seats open on the ballot because you can't decide how to fill a vacancy until the vacancy occurs. The vacancy didn't occur until the oath was taken by Julian on April 19th. To become why, why wasn't Julian counseled to resign as a trustee in March? So he didn't. So had he had he refused to take he his oath, he could have stayed as a trustee. He didn't need to resign. He could have still chosen up until the day he took his oath to stay on as a trustee and leave the mayoral seat to be vacant. Yeah, but I mean, come on, you guys are acting like he left us in this situation. He could have resigned and we would have been only dealing with the mayor right now. Now we have to decide on two vacancies. So you're saying that 2 dash 4 is specific about the current election and doesn't refer to the in the event that a vacancy occurs. Correct. It's it's so that's that's that. Um so now um it's 60 days from today is when the election would be if we had one. No, so the election because of the the way nomination petitions happen it's 91 days before um, an election, if you chose to do a special election, the earliest we could have that election would be Tuesday, August 23rd. So 91 days. Correct. Because I was reading in the state. Municipal Colorado secretary of state municipal code. And it said 60 days, but so uh, that's, you... that's not municipal election. So here. The period of time nominating positions may be circulated and signed commencing the 91st day and ending the 71st day prior to the election. The 91st day would be tomorrow if you were to vote to do a special election tonight. Right. 
So um, my other question to you, Miranda, is you're telling us that the election would only cost like a thousand dollars, but a few years ago when there was we wanted people wanted to do a special election, they were told it was going to cost like ten thousand dollars. So, so what, what is the real cost of this election? So the this a past election cost us just shy of four thousand dollars, and the reason for that is a taper. We had those taper notices, so we had more printing and mailage uh, postage costs. Mm -hmm. um, we do anticipate this election would be approximately two thousand. Also, historically, we used to use business connection to print and fold and send out all of our ballots, where now we do that all in house. Um, so you've removed that expense as well, and it's all just human power done by my team. And thank you for that. Karen, you had your hand up. Uh, I just had a quick question for Miranda. I think it's quick. Mm -hmm. And it's related to um, something Tanya was talking about. And not that we can go back and undo and redo anything, but if we had a situation in the future where um, someone who was on the ballot um, for mayor and they were moving out of town, so they were going to resign at some point shortly after the election, and they were also vacating a trustee seat. Um, could that, if that person had decided not to run, uh, had stepped out of the race, um, could we then reschedule the election to a later date with more candidates? So I think, you know, maybe I'm, I'll kind of scope back a little bit. You know, I think in that certain situation, as you see the last day to amend a nomination petition or withdrawal is 63 days prior. So Say in the certain circumstances that someone knew in July that they had to leave, we couldn't remove them from the ballot because of this statement here. Now, in terms of the ability to stop the process to then move forward, I, I'm going to turn to Attorney Madsen, but I think the issue becomes you, you then haven't moved forward with filling the vacancy or deciding how you're going to fill the vacancy within 60 days. But Attorney Madsen, yeah. can you weigh in? I, I actually have no experience with that as far as if you can hold off an election or postpone it. Um, and by statute, actually for regular elections, the town is required to hold its elections on that first Tuesday in April. So I think there's a little bit, there's it's a little different when you flip to, let me get statute, when you flip to special elections, but I do think you'll run into some I do think that will run into some issues of whether or not we've then handled the vacancy appropriately. Mm -hmm. um, and so really, so it says, special election shall be held on any Tuesday designated by ordinance or resolution of the governing body. And then it goes into, but there's a lot of blackout dates, which is also why we're proposing having this meeting tonight, because you don't want to get too close to the regular election or any other um, primaries. Um, the special election shall be conducted in the same manner as regular elections, which is why we've then created this timeline. Um, I guess I can't really speculate, Trustee Blakemore. I think the biggest thing is is just this here. Like if someone was gonna not wanna move forward, like we had this with Dan Harrower two years ago where he withdrew his nomination, but he was already on the ballot. The ballots were already printed. There's nothing we can do besides get the message out there saying, please don't vote for this person. Yeah, I know. Gilpin County canceled a an election recently, and maybe it, it was because uh, there was no race. <laughs> there weren't, you know, enough right. candidates. That's the only way you can cancel an election is if you have the exact number of candidates for the vacant position. So in this situation, if when the nomination petitions end, we have one mayoral applicant and one trustee, then the board of trustees will be brought before the board of trustees to cancel the election. I'm not sure that that will be the case here, but it is very possible. In which case we would then move forward with the appointments because we didn't have enough candidates to fill to actually run an election. Oh, okay. Um, I guess since it's my turn to talk, I'll just quickly say that when I was um, uh, campaigning, um, uh, the folks I, I talked with did want an election for the mayor. Um, they felt it was important for um, the residents to choose um, the mayor and not 
rely on the Board of Trustees to appoint someone. Um, and I, I'm in favor of doing an election for both the mayor and the trustee um, because that will give more um, control to the residents. Um, and that's it. Oops, Jonathan, uh, your turn. Uh, Joey, um, you know, I could agree with Tanya's sentiment. It's unfortunate we're here, but I would think it's less a result of uh, any malicious intent by anybody or any anything beyond the fact that we have run into a situation where any mayoral candidate was most likely going to be a trustee. Um, and in this situation, I fundamentally wish it could be as simple as appointing uh, the next individual with the amount of votes. But if we're going to have a special election, we might as well give the citizens the opportunity to fill both those seats by election, as opposed to appointing a trustee and then having a mayoral election. So fundamentally, I guess here I'm in support of having the special election. That said, I do think that we need to correct this potential issue. Hi, Colt. The dog wants to say <laughs> no. <more. laughs> um, we need to correct this potential issue and look into our town code and really specify what happens in the event that a current trustee in the middle of a four year term attempts to run for mayor. It should be clear and we should be able to still fill all those seats in one election and not have the need to either an appoint a trustee um, or hope that the trustee running for mayor loses to an individual who currently isn't on the board. So those are just my thoughts kind of moving forward. And I think it's very unfortunate. I do believe that we have an individual who did all the due diligence, proper work, campaigned, ran, and based upon being on the ballot and us needing another trustee was elected. Unfortunately, there's a fundamental issue with Town of Nutterland Code, and it seems to be that this BOT for the last four years has been running into those and correcting those. So I believe we work with town staff, move forward on this town election and correct the potential for this mishap in the future. I want to just clarify though, that as a statutory town, we don't, our elections aren't governed by the Netherland Municipal Code. And so I know that that's brought into question maybe a further discussion about home rule versus statutory, but there is not much as a statutory town that you can do. You can't override state. There state. is no way to create a resolution and ordinance that says in the event a town of Netherland trustee runs for mayor in the middle of their four year term and is elected, the individual with the next number, closest number of votes. Because that's just absurd. The, the, that's not how cause state statute dictates how a vacancy is to be handled. So what could happen is if that were to occur, there's just a common understanding you're going to automatically turn to vacancy through appointment. But I, I, well, then, yes, we could dictate that, that in the event the BOT is obligated to appoint the individual with the next number of votes. And that way we dictate to the future BOT what happens. and. Like that solve the issue of this potentially happening again. Because it seems absurd because most likely, unless it's a perfect situation, your trust, your mayor is gonna come from the trustees. I just would, Attorney Madsen, I just wanna confirm that, that that can be stated in ordinance, that that's how we'll always fill a vacancy in that situation. Well, it, you know, somebody may be able to challenge it as, um, you know, just as, as Miranda was saying, um, not an act that a statutory town could take. Um, and the other way that it could be, you know, you could have a future board say, we don't like this and amend the ordinance. Um, that's always possible. But that's a start. 
like before the next election, we could do that. It would be a start. The, the, what I'm hearing loud and clear, though, is that an election could be uh, con could be contested because the law is fuzzy. Is that right, Attorney Madsen? Well, the appointed position. So what okay. it sounds like what you're saying is you would write into town code that um, if there is a vacancy after an election, that the person appointed would be the the next highest vo vote from the previous election. Um, and so somebody could then, if that person was appointed through that process and people didn't like that person, um, you know, potentially the risk is that somebody would challenge the appointment as an unlawful act by a statutory town. Okay. So fundamentally, if the trustee is in the middle of the four year term, they shouldn't run for mayor or else we're always going to have an open seat if they're elected after an election. That's just a reality of state statute and there's nothing this town can do about that. It, it is a reality and I think it happens in many other municipalities, um, other statutory towns. And what happens is people fill by appointment or special elections. Um, you know, if there's a process that the, the desire is to fill by appointment with that fourth seat or, or whatever, you could do that. It's okay. just not, I, I question there's a risk as to putting that into code. Yeah, so I can understand that. So moving forward tonight, I guess what I would see is if it's 60 days versus 91 days, we might as well wait the extra 31 days to give the public the full opportunity because this has created another situation in the town of Netherlands that has rocked the boat politically, so to speak. People are engaged. So there's a silver lining to this. More people are going to actually get out and vote in this election, and hopefully there's going to be more candidates. So we ride the silver lining, we go for the special election, and it's unfortunate, and I would encourage anybody who ran in the last election to run again, and run again on your same platform, and let's hope that this brings more folks out to vote, and there is a greater number of citizens to give direction on both this mayoral candidate and a new trustee. So, and a trustee, Bumper, I just want to offer clarification. The board, if you wanted to go the route of appointment you could do so you'd have to make that decision for trustee before june 19th you have until july 23rd to make that decision for mayor so i just wanted to offer that clarification if we go the route of appointment we would still follow the town ordinance with regard to our appointment process which means we would put out the petitions for folks to be appointed Correct. That was my understanding. Correct. So what we would recommend is putting that out tomorrow for those two positions, and then you would decide at the June meeting how you were to go the, the route of appointment. Yes. So then a uh, difference between when that would go before you as an appointment decision versus when the election would happen at 60 days. I guess fundamentally, I would say it would I'm willing to wait the extra 60 days if this is such a contentious issue in the hopes that more citizens in the town of Netherlands will show up, actually vote, make their voices heard. If we wait, do we run it? What happens uh, in terms of bumping into primaries and, and such? Ideally, we, we shouldn't wait on the special election. So there's a series of blackout dates. So when we start to get into September, we're getting a little tight to blackout dates. This is why we asked for this, requested that this special meeting happen because I think the sentiment of the board was you wanna do a special election sooner than later. August is a safe month to do that because we don't run into blackout dates. And therefore the preference as town staff, our recommendation to you is if you go the route of a special election, do so, call for that today so that we can have that election on, on August 23rd. Um, this is Tony. Oh, go ahead. I, well, I want to say I'm in favor of the election, and then, and let me know if you're not ready to switch gears at this second. But I'm thinking there's been many times where it seems like it's beneficial for Netherlands to be a home rule town, and it needs to be voted on 
by the people from what I understood what Miranda said. So I would like to in the mayor Mahal Mahalwood, um, if you could put this on the agenda at some point for a discussion about getting that on the ballot in this special election so that we can become a home rule town and we're not constantly thwarted by state municipality code. You won't be able to put that on a special election. That would have to go on a regular election. Oh. So the earliest you could become home rule. You could put that before the voters in 2024, but you can't put that on a special election. Ballot. Okay, so we can't put that on a special election and we can't phrase it like Jonathan wanted to phrase, but I thought was really good. The um, So we're just kind of like, oh, going to be in this situation until- Well, we so I do that. think, and I know we've talked about this in the past, like the board can continuously state in your meeting that your intention is whoever, if the mayoral candidate is an internal board member who moves, that your intention is to fill the trustee vacancy with whoever gets the second seat. Yeah. And that can be your verbal I, agreement. I mean, you can't put that can on have ballot. Agreement. Sure. You can just continue to state that that is your intention, that is your plan all along, you know, so that people know, but it, it, the language can't go on the ballot. Just so that we're not back in the situation in August again. If that is the case, we don't really even know who wants to run for mayor, but all right. Well, I have, um, I have a couple concerns about that. Um, suppose that the um, person who who's running for trustee and got the next um, number of votes, um, what if they have a really low number of votes, like 10 or 20? They're not they're not representing the community then. I think they would have to have at least um, uh, a proportional number. Yeah. So if you have three seats available um, and there were uh, 400 um, people who voted, I would think that we'd only automatically um, seat that fourth runner up if they had a hundred votes or more. Yeah, I, I like that. But, and here's the but, other issue that I have I, with I this. got a way simpler solution to all of this, actually, guys, that we don't really need to argue about anymore. It's town staff should just fundamentally, as soon as it, the petitions are put in for future mayoral elections, if one of the those petitions is a current four-year term trustee, Town staff should advise that trustee to step down as soon as they put in their petition. Therefore, opening up mm. that trustee seat in the next election, and then we never are put in this position again. Yeah. It's I, that simple. I like well, that. Sometimes they're not running unopposed. So, like in Julian Taylor's oh, right. position, then that's the risk that they should take. That was the counsel I was originally given when I had really? asked about the potential of running oh. for mayor when I was a okay. four year trustee. So they take a chance. You just, you're giving up your trustee seat. Exactly. You know? That's it. That should be the rule that we can put in code. I believe. Can we not? Attorney Madsen. I'm sorry. Can you specify, ask that question again? Can we specify that as run, running for the mayor of the town of Nutterland, you may not be a current four-year trustee member? And if you are, you are advised to, you have to step down. You have to resign prior to running. So there is no potential of, well, if they're elected, they could choose not to be mayor. Because that's how we are in this situation is the interpretation of state statute that they always could choose to not accept the election results. Right. Um, there isn't a conflicting state statute on it. Um, so that is something that, you know, probably you can. I'm not aware of any other municipalities that do that, but I could research, see if other municipalities do it. Um, the issue with the appointment process and putting that in town code is it does conflict with state statute. So I think you might have greater, you know, there'd be less risk with adding that provision to the code. And even if we can't add the provision, we can state it strongly in the actual paperwork for petition for running for mayor. As a suggestion, and I believe that any future mayor can, candidate 
having seen this situation would acknowledge that suggestion. So I think that's how we move forward. We move forward with the suggestion of a special election and I'm open to more discussion about this topic, but it seems mostly that it's unfortunate and we have a clear path forward, both for future problems and for tonight. The other issue I see with um, appointing someone after an election, um, if they receive the next highest number of votes, is that I think that citizens need to know exactly how many people they're voting for. Um, because they may choose di different strategies for voting if they're voting for three seats or four seats. And to not know that up front, uh, I, I don't think is, um, is fair to the people, to the voters. Elaborate on what you mean by uh, different strategies for voting. Well, um, you you have a choice of voting for um, if there's uh, three seats available. You have a choice of voting for zero to three. Now, if we're going to say, well, um, the fourth runner-up will receive a seat if um, the person who's running for mayor and is currently a trustee is elected. Um, so there's that uncertainty, and so. People have a choice when they're voting about who they vote for and how many in a multi seat election. Um, and I think it's unfair um, for the voters not to know exactly how many seats they're voting for when they fill out their ballot. Um, I may choose a different three candidates knowing that there's four seats available versus three seats. You're right. Yeah, but you're I'm still going to vote for your favorite person if you're only. You know, it, it's a reflection of people's favorite candidate. If there's one candidate available to vote for, and as it will have in this election, people will vote for one. And if the runner up, and it sounds like we have a lot of discussion to do about this and we have time to figure it out, but it sounds like if the runner up gets, you know, 50 votes less than the other person, then it sounds like they are a popular candidate also within the community. Um, and I don't really get what you're saying. I mean, it, it would it would totally change the way people voted if they could vote for four candidates for three spots. But the fact is, it's still a reflection of people's favorite choices. And some people would not vote for the same person that I would vote for and vice versa. And that's with one choice, three choices, it doesn't matter. That's, that's my perspective on it. Um, so, I mean, I think we don't have to hash out all the fine details of this at this moment, since it's all just going to be verbally agreed upon um, before the next election. But I think we seem like we're mostly in agreement that we do want a special election, but I suppose we haven't really heard much from Tom. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with a lot of what, um, well, I agree with what each of you said, um, but I especially feel the pain over what Jonathan pointed out, um, essentially, um, you know, we, we, and we're going to go through this again real shortly. If, uh, if I run for mayor and, and win, we have to go through this whole ordeal again. And so, um, I'm not like you, I'm not terribly pleased about where we find ourselves, but this is where we find ourselves. Um, we certainly, um, you know, we've gotten feedback from our public, the, the written uh, feedback, we're gonna hear uh, spoken feedback soon, um, that they were in favor uh, of, a, of um, running an, an election for both parties. Um, and so I tend to go uh, give a lot of weight uh, since we're representing the people of Netherlands to what the people of Netherlands who take the time to express themselves say they want. Um, so we're gonna hear, um, that's kind of where I'm at, Tanya, does that, help okay um and i you know I, when i talked with eric about this he was pretty clear if he were here to vote tonight um he would vote for an election for both um uh, both offices um but that's how we just how we feel at this point does anybody before we go to pu the public comment section on this action item d does anybody else have something to say um I just want to point out that even though oh, um, D 
do okay my question is and, may, and maybe i should know the answer to this already miranda if we have a vacancy on the board of trustees do we need to fill it or can we just run with one short you need to fill it yeah that's the 60 days you need to decide within 60 days of a vacancy how you plan to fill it because it must be filled okay and then i'm looking at the colorado um state statutes um section 31 4 301 um that five, we can change the number of trustees from six to four. So you're at 31 four, sorry, where are you? 31 four, 301.5. Do you, do you agree with that interpretation? Yeah, so you could, so in the gen to clarify, this will still have, you'll have one mayor, but then four trustees or six trustees. Currently we have six trustees, but you'll need a petition. Looks like you'll need a petition signed by, signed by 5% of registered electors in order to move forward with that. Okay, that's another night's discussion. I think we've got, uh, we've got some election discussion coming up this summer uh, as we sort through this. Um, any other so, comment or questions? Mayor President Mahold, I guess the one thing and maybe why Trustee Blakemore is bringing it up is that if there was a desire that could go before the voters in a special election, um, the question then becomes pulling that petition together quick enough, but it does say that this issue could go before the electors as a part of a special election. If I'm reading, okay. I'm reading this super fast, so let me just confirm. But you'd want to, you wouldn't want to talk about that tonight because it's not on your agenda. You'd want to talk right. about that in two weeks. Right, right. Okay. Um, but that's a hypothetical possibility that this could happen. And it is, but it's not on the agenda tonight. So I think it's something, if it, if uh, something does start to come together, then we're going to need to take a look at it then. Um, anybody else, uh, questions or comments? Um, before we open it up to the public. Can I, can I just correct something um, that a, the question of home rule could go to a special election. Um, it doesn't have to wait for a regular election. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, I did reach out to attorney Madsen for that clarification. Cause I actually think I misread this document. I sent you Tanya does note that. So something we could talk about at the next meeting. I, what I would want to do though is make sure that we tie together if that's a desire of this board. We may need to meet again sooner because that election calendar runs quick. And so I'd it want to make sure we all those ducks in a row. If that Clarification was real quick on home rule. That means we would lose statutory funding for the police department. Is that correct? So we don't get, I mean, what do you mean by statutory funding for the police department? My understanding of the reason that we have always shied away from home rule, because there has always been about a 50, 50, sometimes 60, 40, depending on the electorate support for that is that we would lose access to certain support and funding via the state. Um, Dr. Cog funding, for instance, um, I'm not aware uh, of that. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Cox was the home rule community. That was the advice of the last town administrator. Hmm. So I would like some clarification on that before discussion of home rule. Okay. Fair. That's fair. Anything else? Um I know we're going to have some folks that want to speak tonight. Um, I would ask you that you first uh, use the um, hand up button uh, to to signal that you want to speak. And then when we do open uh, to public comment, um, I would um, I would uh, that you you're going to need to identify uh, who you are, um, uh, whether in res your resident or not, and limit your comments uh, to. What we're discussing tonight and to three minutes and um macy uh you, you'll start the clock and let us know when the when the time is up um and so last call for board members before we go to public comment okay let's move on uh who wants to go first
Does anybody want to speak? Uh, unmute. If you're on the phone, it's star six. Um, uh, Christopher Larson. Good. First hand up. <laughs> Evening, guys. Uh, Christopher Larson. I am a town resident. I uh, just really want to speak out in support of uh, the written comments in the in the agenda and the things I've heard tonight. I think this is certainly a case where a a special election is called for. I know we've talked both routes in the past, but I think this early in the new board's term with two seats available, I think is very clearly a, a time for that. Um, and I just also wanted to support something that uh, both Tanya and Jonathan brought up was this long held idea of home rule. Because we do bump into this, we have bumped into this a lot, and obviously you guys are bumping into it again tonight, is the what we can actually do as a town versus what we are allowed to do statutorily. And there are certainly uh, questions to be asked there. Uh, the reason we've never gone for it before has always been the fact that it is a it is not a fast process. To become a home rule town, basically, you need to write a constitution for the town and all the town code anew. Um, so you need to write all the stuff that we rely on state statute. We need to write our own versions of. We can certainly crib off of a lot of other towns, but it is. When we approached this in the past, we were told it was at least a 1 year effort of a dedicated committee, something that was meeting every couple of weeks to work on this proposal before it went to an election of the of the town of the residents. So it is definitely something we've we've bumped up against in the past and I, you know, certainly I've been in support of in the past and would really encourage this new board to take a serious look at, but it is not a quick fix for some of the things you guys have been discussing this evening. So thank you guys so much for your service and talk. Uh, yeah, thanks. Can I ask you a question, Mr. Larson? Sure. Uh, so you're saying before it would go on a ballot, this committee would have to have it all dialed in. So it basically, really yeah. Be oh, possible was that, I see Jennifer Denton shaking her head. That was my understanding, and that was why we hadn't done it in the past. But I would defer to, uh, you know, the attorney Madsen on that one. Okay. Thanks. The question for the ballot is, do you want to um, put in place a charter commission for home rule? And then the charter commission writes what Christopher Larson was talking about, writes your town charter. And that is, a, a, it does take a while to put together that, that charter, but that's the question for the voters. Um, understood. Okay, who wants to speak next? So this is Julian Taylor, and I don't have WebEx on any of my Linux machines. May I speak? Go ahead. Okay. Very fine. Julian Taylor, town resident. Um, so I've made my argument clearly in a public forum, and I'll not repeat it here. I include it by reference. Suffice it to say, if the purpose of a Netherland BOT election is simply to determine the order in which all candidates may assume the next open seat, then an election doesn't carry much value. A vote against any candidate merely reduces the likelihood that they will serve long. It also means that new candidates who would wish to apply for such a seat are blocked until all of the also lands are in place. It has been noted that certain BOTs did actually fill vacant trustee seats from the also lands of a prior election. Whether you think that is the best way to appoint or not, at least one BOT did not select the next vote getter in line, but instead exercised its authority and freely chose a different also land. Some BOTs have asked for applicants exactly the way Miranda has described from the public and chosen from that slate. Different BOTs have followed different methods for appointing, and perhaps it would be best for this BOT to get to settle on a specific procedure. But to let the people choose is always the best option. That's the end of my statement. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Um, who else wants to speak? Hello, can you hear me? We can. Kathleen Chibai. 30 year East Magnolia resident and 18 year business owner. Um, the question I have is you guys just all took a, an oath to uphold the code and 
all of a sudden the code doesn't mean anything anymore. And for 10 years I've been saying that the town tends to pick and choose when it's going to use the code, it's not going to use the code, who to enforce it on, who not to enforce it on. And we always come to the conclusion, oh, let's think of something so this doesn't happen again. But we've always screwed someone along the way. And um, I'm, it's unfortunate we are here, but it's not that we didn't know we were going to be here, and it's not that we didn't control how we got here. We did control how we got here. And in previous election cycles, when people couldn't remove their name from their ballot, but they knew they wouldn't be uh, sitting in, the, in a seat at all or maybe uh, more than a month or two, those people, when they knew, immediately announced it to the town, and the town and the people tried to tell everybody that those people had dropped out. And it is really pitiful that uh, Mr. Taylor uh, wasn't open and transparent. It's it. He and Miranda, there are emails that show that they were deciding what they were going to do. The state statute says the Board of Trustees decides what to do. Uh, it feels like uh, the, the Board of Trustees have been pushed by a person who had no competition himself, funny enough, didn't really beat anybody because nobody ran against him. And that's because incumbents win more than 90% of all elections, even on a national level when they have less than a 20% approval rating for 40 years straight. So um, I'm disappointed in the town. I'm disappointed that the, that the oath that you all just said you were going to uphold the code in Nederland, uh, I don't see any legal presentation to sway me from the basic reading of one sentence that solves this whole problem that was intentionally created by Julian and Miranda and the town at, at the under the advice of the town attorney. So, um, and now you're talking about writing something else. What 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 negates what deletes any meaning behind what the code currently says? And why was everyone told not to look there or look away? Look at state statutes. As long as the code in Nederland does not conflict with the state statute. We already solved this problem, and I, I've read this code more than anybody. I've read the packets. I've read the history of this community, and this is this is unbelievable that this is happening right now. is is all I got to say, and um, I'm sorry we're here. And I appreciate Tanya who was silenced for trying to bring this up before, because you guys, Julian Taylor should have resigned as a trustee in March or just sat on as a trustee and uh, the mayor, we could have figured that out before uh, before all this. We could have had a write-in candidate by the 31st of January and resolved this because Julian was applying for out-of-state jobs, and that is found in okay. public record and statements he made himself at Board of Trustees. Yes, I think we've hit time. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. So, who else would like to speak? Second call. Any does anybody else want to speak? Scott Papich, please. Uh, you're you're on board. Go ahead and unmute. Thanks, Tom. Um, this is Scott Papich. I'm a resident of town, and uh, I have to tell you that any time there isn't anything preventing an election in a case like this, or when there's an open position, if there is nothing that prevents an election, the people of this town deserve to have an election. You just had one. I'm sorry. Was it somebody else's turn? It's, it's your turn, Scott. Okay. Um, I'm not really convinced either that we should be, uh, first of all, I don't think we should have people who are also runs but didn't get elected. I don't know that they should be moved into positions without another election for all the reasons that were mentioned um, by other people earlier. And I'm not sure that I agree yet with the idea that if someone runs for mayor, they have to give up their seat on the board. I think that we should just expect that people to move from the board into the mayor seat in the future. But 
just given what we're talking about on tonight's agenda, without opening up another bigger can of worms, I am absolutely in favor of a special election. I think it should be both for the board, um, the board seat and the mayor. And again, anytime there's nothing preventing us from having an election, the town should be having an election, not an appointment. Thanks for hearing me. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Who else would like to speak? Not hearing any, uh, I guess this is time to close public comment. The last call before I do. Okay, public comment is closed. Um, I guess uh, Miranda, this is the point where we go to a vote. Have further discussion if that's a desire of the board. Otherwise, someone could make a motion to approve these resolutions, and I'll pull it back up. Karen, these you, resolutions uh, before you. Karen, you always like to make the motion. Uh, uh, it's your turn tonight. So I want to offer clarification too, and, and I'm sure Trustee Blakemore, you know this, but you'd want to start with the resolution. If you're going to go, say, the route of a special election, you need to do all three, and you would start with resolution 30. If you're going appointment, you just need to do a, a resolution 29. Got it. And as a point of clarification, I think it makes sense just for the re record um, that if you don't want to do a an appointment, then there is a resolution in the packet on appointment. And so then there should be a motion to deny that resolution. Okay. Or, or dis not approve that resolution. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'd like to make a motion to disapprove resolution 2022-29, which is to fill the vacancies through appointment. So the motion is to disapprove. Correct. Good. Do we have a second? Tanya, if you're there, Jonathan. I'm there. I'm just trying to figure out which what disapprove what. I'm I'm so that it would be to disapprove this. Resolution filling the vacancy by appointment. Ah, I see. Which well, then de facto I'll... approves, um, goes, uh, defaults to the other resolution. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, you'll still want to make a motion, but in essence, that is what you're stating. Okay. Tom, I think you can second. Oh, I was wondering what the rules are. Is that uh, accurate? Yes, you can second. I second. Macy, can you call the vote? Yes. Uh, Trustee Blakemore? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Mahold? Yes. Trustee Baumhover? Yes. And Trustee Corvalon? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Brandon, let's go back to you. What does this mean now? So you'll want to then move forward with resolution 2022-30 here. And, and I believe based on your previous action, the desire is to approve this resolution. Filling the vacancies through a special election. We need uh, to make a motion for that, yes? Correct. Uh, okay. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022-30 which is to fill the vacancies through a special election. Second. Macy, call the vote. Mayor Pro Tem Mahold. Yes. Trustee Baumhover. Yes. Trustee Blakemore. Yes. And Trustee Corvalon. Yes. Thank you. Moving right along to resolution 2022-31. Um, designating the town clerk as a designated election official. Um, I move to approve that resolution. Second. Second. Okay. 
Uh, Mason, can you call the vote? Trustee Corvalon? Yes. Trustee Baumhover? Yes. Trustee Blakemore? Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Mahol? Yes. Thank you. And, and then finally, resolution 2022-32, approving a mail-in ballot election. I move that we approve that resolution. Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> You have the, you take this one, Jonathan. Go for it. <laughs> Macy, uh, please call the vote. Trustee Corvalon? Yes. Trustee Baumhover? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Mahol? Yes. And Trustee Blakemore? Yes. Thank you. that uh, conclude our business for this evening, Miranda? There's nothing else on the docket, right? That's it. Okay. Well, uh, you mentioned, oh, go ahead. No, go right ahead. I, it was the uh, some other business. I didn't know if you were heading that way. Yeah. Is there any other business? Well, I wanted to touch back on some things we talked about earlier, and I want to mention that Attorney Madsen had sent us all an email um, outlining, pro outlining pros and cons of home ruling, home rule for Netherlands. Um, and um, it's a pretty concise, easy to read document. I don't know if everyone read that or not. Um, and I would love to, I mean, I know like this next meetings docket is super full and what is the deadline that we would need to discuss this uh, Miranda, in order to get it in the special election yeah. of August. I'd like to put it on the June 7th. And so Mayor Pro Tem Mahold, I'll need to meet with you. I think time is of the essence because we have to get ballots out in July. So it'll be important. The Board of Trustees can move to put home rule on the ballot through an ordinance. So it would be important to have this conversation sooner than later. So we'll get it okay. on as a discussion for June 7th. Okay, well, that's a big meeting. Okay, um, and then the other, uh, I wanted to touch upon what um, Trustee Blakemore mentioned about for having only four trustees. And I know the advantage of that is that you can meet quorum with the less amount that's needed. I could imagine three. But I just want to say that it's just a really small pool of the population. And as much as I like it when less people show up to the meetings because they go a lot quicker, it's not good because we don't get the varying opinions and perspectives and expertise that all of us can offer. I like that we have six. I'm bummed that all summer, you know, we're going to be missing two people. Um, I love that all you guys are really great and intelligent, but I think it is probably not, in my opinion, you know, good to lessen the amount of opinions that we have in this board of trustees, because ideally we represent different populations in this town. Um, and that's all I wanted to say for tonight. And thank you guys. Trustee Baumhofer, um, anything else to say that you want to say? I uh, just wanted to offer some clarification on my point of um, perspective here. I always believe in the opportunity presents itself like this to go to special election, special election should be what we do that it's always more important that the citizens and the people have the right to vote and that as uh, our former mayor taylor just pointed out that if the people can make the choice let the people make the choice i believe my goal tonight was to look for a solution in what could potentially be a situation exactly like tonight we will be facing come this special elections results. So to clarify my position, I believe that as a town, as a BOT and as town staff, when we run into situations like this, I'm not necessarily of the belief that we should just opt that in the event a four-year trustee member runs for mayor is elected, that the next result is to have a special election, nor do I necessarily believe that that BOT should then appoint either from the 
potential next runner up or by process of appointment. I believe that there is a solution, an elegant solution that is fairly simple to resolve this problem. So a future BOT does not have to deal with it because it's slightly a frustrating situation where you just had an election. You are trying to form board goals as a new board and you are trying to carry on the legacy of the old board, continue government continuity. And instead you are pushed off from doing that for another four months till you actually have a full board. And as trustee Corvalon just pointed out, we need all the voices we can in such a small, diverse and eloquent town. So my goal tonight in trying to figure out how can we not have to make this decision again? How can we not have to appoint someone through a 60 day, 30 day, 90 day process is simply a means of trying to make town of Netherland government work more functionally because it seems to stutter along to me so appreciate everyone today appreciate all the public comment all the frustration by members of the public that feel disenfranchised and i would hope that this situation brings out members of the public to actively have their voices heard here here i totally agree do we have a motion to adjourn or is there anybody else that wants to say something? I'll move to adjourn. Second. Macy, please call the vote. Trustee Blakemore. Yes. Trustee Corvalon. Yeah. Trustee Baumhover. Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Mahol. Yes. Thank you. And with that, we close at 7.02, uh, which is, uh, it would be a, a really good habit to get into. Yeah, it would. Sounds All right. Maybe not the next meeting, though. It's on you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Okay.